Hello and welcome to Avenue Church Online. My name is Lindsay Bosma and I am so excited that you are here with us today. Do me a favor right now, put in the comments, where are you watching from? Are you in bed drinking your favorite cup of coffee? Are you already awake and doing things around the home? Are you driving and you're listening to this online? Tell us where you are watching from today. What city, what state? Because we welcome you and we are so thrilled that you are here today. You know, we're in this middle of a collection of talks entitled Phases. Now, phases, they move us through changes. We've got to recognize that that is the purpose of a phase. When something seems too big or overwhelming, the phases are stages or steps that help us move through changes. That's awesome that we have that. So don't feel like something is too big to be accomplished. We simply take a step back and we break it down into phases to make it more doable and to make it more understandable. So that is what we're doing as a church here through these talks. You know, we've been following the story of the Israelites. And today I want us to walk through the transition phase from the wilderness to the promised land. Come on, they've come out of Egypt, but now we got to phase out from the time in the wilderness to actually stepping into what had God had promised them and what he had called them to. And I want us to see something so incredibly important during this transitional phase, and this is it, that there is preparation work when it comes to promise. Come on, the Israelites had to prep for the promised land and Joshua would be the man to lead them through it. He had to lead them through the prep work to get to the promise. So I wanna take you real quick to Joshua chapter one. Check this out. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, he's not the son of Nun, he's the son of someone. This is just his name, okay? He's not an orphan. But he said to Moses, his aid this, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready. Come on, get prepared to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. There is prep work in the promise. And he is speaking to Joshua about the children of Israel. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, onto the great river, onto the Euphrates, the Hittite country, the Mediterranean Sea in the West. This is going to be a big promise. This is a huge territory. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. You Can I stop right there? Because that is such an incredible and encouraging statement that affects us right now. You see, Moses was the first person to ever receive the word that I want my people to come out of Egypt. That was God's vision that he shared first and foremost with Moses. But guess what now? Moses is gone. Moses' time and his work in that vision coming to pass is over. But hear me, he has passed away, but the vision had not passed away. God still wanted to take his people to the promised land, but Moses was gone. But come on, there was a Joshua. There was a Joshua to take now the vision and carry it out to the next step to see the fulfillment of God's people entering in the promised land. You know, I think back and I look at our country and even our world, and I look back at the incredible life-changing leaders, world changers, like evangelist Billy Graham. I think of the civil rights activist, the champion of people, Martin Luther King Jr. I think of the world servant, Mother Teresa, and the former president, Abraham Lincoln. I think of these leaders. I look at them as Moseses. They were ones that had vision and, and let it be known and got people excited about the promises and the hope. But often when, when people like that, like a Moses-type character, when they pass away, Friends, we can't forget that there's a Joshua. We cannot forget that there are Joshua's can pick up where they left off and keep that movement, keep that promise going. You know, I have been praying. And and what's been going on in our country, not just with the pandemic, but come on, the injustices that have been seen over and over again, not just in this season, come on, for years and years, decades and decades that this has been going on. But I have been praying for Joshua's for men and for women who would pick up the vision and they would run with it, that they would ignite chains and change and champion the cause to see people through to the promised land. So let's go back to to Joshua chapter one. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. 
Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful. Friends, God wants us to be successful in the prep work. He wants us to be successful in our journey to the promise wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Think upon it. Think upon it. Think about it some more so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Remember that word prosperous, that is when God's supernatural favor comes into partnership with my work, my prep work, my action. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Guys, when God says something three times, come on, not just once, I told you. You know, have you had that moment with your child where it's like, I told you twice. Are you not listening to me? He encourages Joshua three different times. I'm gonna need you, son, to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. What an incredible promise. Not only have I called you to great things, big things, large and amazing, a promised land for you. I've promised you that I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. That wherever you go, I'm going with you. That's amazing. See, there, God gave them some steps in the portion of scripture that we just read. That's why I love that text. Because God gave them steps to prep for the promise. The first thing he said is, I need you to prep your heart. Be strong and courageous, you guys. That, that's a heart command. When, I, when God tells us to be strong and courageous, it makes us ask ourselves, how's my heart? Can you imagine the tension of the children of Israel? They are coming out of the wilderness and, and they're getting ready to step into a long-awaited promise. Some of you guys have been waiting for things a long time. This pandemic, we're waiting about three months to, to find ourselves into a new norm that seems you know, somewhat comfortable or, or somewhat okay. But there are other people who've been waiting on promises hopes and dreams that have been decades in the waiting, some hundreds of years in the waiting. But imagine the tension that this group of people have, have been having along the way. And it asks us, how's their heart? But what about us? How's, how's my heart? See, there's tension in our country right now, not only from the, the recent pandemic, but the, the years of injustice. How's your heart? Are you broken? Are you angry? When you, when you read in the news or you scroll through social media, are you confused? Are you desperate? Are you numb? How's your heart? Because God tells us to be strong and to be courageous. That, that's a heart check. You see, our words and our actions, they're an overflow of what is happening in our heart. And so the first thing we have to do when we are prepping for the promise, when we are going through that prep phase, is I've got to prep my heart. And I got to ask, how is my heart? Because hear me, hope preps my heart for the promise. Love for God and love for humanity preps my heart for the promise. Vision, come on, to be able to see that there is something on the other side of this, no matter how long this journey has been, no matter how frustrating I have been, my family has been, no matter the hardships, come on, and the obstacles that we have overcome in this season, I've got to see that there's another side to all this. Friends, can I tell you, there is another side to all of this. There's another side to the pandemic. There's another side to the social injustices, to the, to, to the lack of love for humanity. There's another side to it. And see, vision is life-giving blood. Come on, pumping through my body that preps me for the promise. We need hope. We need vision. We need to check our hearts, be strong and courageous as we prep for God's promises. See, prepping for the promise, it, it doesn't just happen in the heart. It requires action. The word of God said, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. So not only do we have to prep our heart, but we gotta, we gotta follow God's word. Don't turn from the right or the left. You're wondering right now, maybe you are watching this today and you are wondering, what should I do right now? Follow God's word. What does the Bible say? Do that. Watch what you think. Not only follow God's word, and his commands be in your word to know your word. Come on. But we got to watch what we think. Take your thoughts captive. You know, as, as God told Joshua to meditate on this word day and night, that's telling me that I need to, to watch what I'm thinking. Because our thoughts are powerful. Our thoughts shape behaviors. Our thoughts linger into our hearts, what then overflows into our actions, our words, and our behaviors. So, so take your thoughts captive is what we learn in the, the New Testament. 
You know, a great way to figure out, am I watching what I think? Am I allowing myself and my mind to go places that are not healthy? Am I allowing my mind to go places that are not lining up with God's word and his love for people? If you want to do a check on how well you're doing in your thinking, Philippians chapter four, verses eight through nine are fantastic for this. It says this, fix your thoughts, meaning that you have the ability to change your thought process and move it from one thought to another. The fixing your thoughts is our responsibility as, as people who love Jesus. It's, it's our, and within our control. Come on. So it says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things. The pure, the thoughtful, the admirable that are excellent and worthy of praise. It all comes down to this, that promises, that's God's business. Action, we're involved in the mix too. But promises plus action equals provision. And provision is God's business. That's God's business. And hear me, God's provision always goes alongside his promises. He is always going to provide for you. The children of Israel were given the promise that you're going to have this enormous land. I'm going to bring you out of Egypt, not just to get you out of slavery. That's not the end result. Is that something to be celebrated? Yes, that the children of Israel were no longer in bondage. Hear me, but that was just phase one. Some of us don't get stuck. Pastor Jeremy has said that over and over again. Do not get stuck in certain phases because this phase is not the promise. The promise is on the other side. The promise may be a couple other phases down the road. So do not get stuck. God didn't want just to remove the Israelites out of Egypt. He didn't want to just take them out of slavery. He wanted to place them in their promises. Think about it as our church. Avenue, we have vision for our church. We want people to know God. We want them to find freedom, but it doesn't just stop there. We want them to, to find their, discover their purpose, find it. What, how did God make me? What is my talent? What are my gifts? What are my strengths? And then make a difference. Know God, find freedom. That's a, that's a huge part of it, but those are, those are phases. Discover purpose, make a difference. You put them all together and then I am living a life full of the abundance that God has for me in this life. That's amazing. See, God wants us to prosper through these phases. He wants us to prosper in his promises. Again, that's God's favor partnering with my action, and that is success. See, God promised Joshua, you're going to have success. But I want you to know that the success wasn't just about Joshua. It wasn't just for Joshua to say that, yes, I made it through this phase and I'm leading well and I'm championing well and, and I'm doing what God wants me to do. The, the success was going to be for a whole group of people. And can I be honest with you? We can't all experience success together if some of us are experiencing discomfort. We can't all celebrate together if others are experiencing pain and suffering. See, in, the, in this context of scripture, as Joshua is prepping the people that, guess what, guys, this is gonna take work. This is gonna take heart work. This is gonna take action to get to the promise. God is gonna be with us, but I need you to do your part. See, there were 12 groups of people that made up the entire children of Israel, 12 groups. And two and a half of those groups had already received their land before crossing over the Jordan River. And I need you to hear this because this is so important. They already had their land. They had already stepped into God's promise. You right now may be in a phase that feels like it is further down the road than others. Maybe you are sitting real good and life is great and you are experiencing promise after promise, peace after peace. Like life is amazing. But the thing is, as a whole community, as a community of believers in Jesus, as a community of Americans even, we are not all doing well. People are suffering. And what Joshua told to the two and a half groups of people that were doing well, he said, listen, I understand that you have arrived to your place of rest. But there are people in our group where God has taken us all out of Egypt. There are still people in our group who are not experiencing rest. They are experiencing unrest. And you can get your family settled in. But warriors, I'm going to need you to step up. And you who have already arrived and are doing well in your phases and you've arrived at your promise, I need you to cross over the Jordan with other people. I need you to join the whole, not just be settled at home because life for you is good. 
I need you to step across with your brothers and your sisters because my people are not settled yet. Not everyone has arrived at God's promise. Can I tell you, friends, not everyone has arrived to the promise of peace. Not everyone has arrived to the promise of equal opportunity. Not everyone has arrived at the promise of safety and security. And while we are in this unrest, we have to champion together. And I love this because hear me, as Joshua's in our country, as Joshua's in our world, in our places of faith, come on, begin to speak up. The people are going to listen. As Joshua's men and women begin to raise their voice, come on, I'm believing that there are even going to be children whose voices are not going to be able to be ignored because they are going to be speaking from a place of hope, challenging people to step up and step out to what God wants for them. And I love it because as Joshua speak, the people listen, come on, and the people catch the vision and the people catch hope. And this is what the people responded to Joshua as he told them, you can't rest while the rest of our family is at unrest. And this is what they said to him after he shared the plan, after he shared the phases. And he said, you too have responsibility. They answered Joshua, we will do whatever you command us and we will go wherever you send us. So you be strong and you be courageous. Do you, know, want to, do you want to know what a great measurement is as a leader if I'm doing well enough? If the people that I lead can turn to me and say the exact same things, you be strong. You be courageous. I too want people to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. What's my role? What's my role? See, friends, the, the prep phase challenge for this week, we've been given challenges every single week. week. The prep phase challenge for this week is two things. Number one, I need us to see the unrest in others. Just because we're not experiencing unrest as an individual or as a family, we still have to see the, with our eyes the unrest that other people are experiencing. The Bible tells us over and over again that we rejoice with those who rejoice. We mourn with those who mourn. And there are broken people, hurting people in our country. And we need to see the unrest in others. And number two, this is what we do. I want you to share hope with someone this week. I want you to listen. I want you to see the unrest. I want you to have an open heart to see what others are going through. Listen and have conversations. But I want you to share hope. Because again, there's a promise on the other side of this. There's, there's hope in Jesus Christ, which means there is another side. There's another side to the pandemic. There's another side to injustice and brokenness and oppression. And you and I are going to get there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But we're going to do it together. So friends, will you allow me to pray with you today? Because I believe that God is going to stir up hope like never before. I believe in the midst of chaos and pain and confusion, God is going to raise up new leaders, leaders that are operating at a certain place. They're going to be operating at a new levels. I believe God is going to do new things, new norms, and he's going to push us past our capacities and push us far beyond what we believe we can do in our own strength because we are going to be operating in his strength. Come on, be strong and courageous. So if you are watching with us today and you're saying, Lindsay, I am in need of hope. Can I tell you the hope that I speak of isn't for us just to get excited about, about something new to come. It's the hope that's found only in Jesus Christ. God makes all things new. God takes a, a heart that is hard and can make it so fresh and wonderful and opening and loving. God transforms lives. That is the hope that is in Jesus Christ. And so if you are watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you aren't able to go to him, you don't feel like you have that connection, I would love to help you take a step today and ask him to come into your life and be the hope to you first. And then you be a hope to the world. Let's pray. Would you pray this with me wherever you're at? Say, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for giving your life for mine. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Make me new. Give me eyes to see the things around me. Give me eyes to see the new person you made me to be. I pray for peace. I pray that you would show me who I am, that I am saved. Come on, I'm redeemed. I'm a child of God. Come on, you, my friend, you're a carrier of hope. We are people who carry hope. 
And my hope for you today is, is that you take that hope to every circle of influence that you can. If you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time, or maybe you rededicated and you got back into a relationship with him today, we want to celebrate with you. Could you text me personally at 702-727-8280? And I would just love to cheer you on and give you some resources. God bless you guys. There is another side and just go be people of hope. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.